Vice President Joe Biden went to Switzerland to continue his quest for a moonshot against cancer. He attended the World Economic Forum in Davos yesterday. Our goal is to make a decade's worth of advances in five years instead of 10, and eventually end cancer as we know it. Each of you could. Uh... President Obama put Biden in charge of what he called mission control at last week's State of the Union. Biden enlisted the world's top cancer experts. Our Dr. David Agus was on yesterday's panel in Switzerland. He leads the Westside Cancer Center at the University of Southern California. He is with us now from Davos. David, good morning. Good morning, Charlie. So let's stand, tell us what you believe now about the moonshot having talked to the vice president. So when I initially heard it from President Obama, I was somewhat skeptical. You know, there's not going to be a new allotment of dollars for this. There's a year left in the current term. But when Biden spoke, he actually said things that were very reasonable. We ran around and we talked about what were the big obstacles blocking cancer. He said, my job is to block the obstacles. The other thing he said, which really rang true to me, is that this isn't a one-year project for him. This is his post-vice presidency product for the rest of his life. And it came from a personal side, which I respect. There were a lot of people that had a personal story in addition to Joe Biden. Many people on that panel, I understand, had lost a family member to cancer. Did, was there an agreement on the panel, David? Well, you know, what was amazing to me is you had a very diverse panel. You had the heads of Cleveland Clinic, Sloan Kettering, and several other institutions. And we all went around saying, what is the big impediment that we can really address? All of us said one thing, and that is big data is that we have to get better at making data with the same terms. So you call it a broken leg, I call it a fracture leg. So common data elements. We have to get better at sharing data. Something as simple as that is reachable. Big data is going to give us the answers. You know, we saw just this year an amazing study that if you had ovarian cancer and you were on one particular blood pressure medicine, you lived much longer. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But isn't a company like IBM and Watson working on that very thing, which is sharing data on issues like cancer? Well, Watson is more about using artificial intelligence to interpret data. So right now, Watson is relying on the public domain data. That is, the manuscripts, the papers that a researcher published and puts out there for the world to see. But what we're talking about really is the data that resides in your medical record the data that resides in the sample, if you have a biopsy, if you have cancer. So historically, those have been restricted, and people have been scared about sharing their data, and hospitals say, listen, I don't want to share the data because I can be sued, and we have to change that. People have to step up and say, I want to be part of the solution, not the problem. I want to be part of the cure, hopefully for myself, but if not me, for my children and grandchildren, and here is my data. Would the would the effort against cancer uh, happen quicker if the federal government spent more money? I'm not sure it's a money issue as a, a collaboration issue. Right now, there are so many different efforts across the country, one here, one here, one here. If we all started to work together with a leader, I think we're going to make staggering process, uh, progress. And so I think Biden stepping up in a really amazing fashion and saying, this is my passion for the next decades. This is what I care about. I lost my son to these horrible diseases, and I got to see firsthand, he said, the inadequacies of our system, how data doesn't help us, how we can't transfer things from one doctor to another, how, in a sense, barbaric some of the treatments are, and I'm going to use that emotion in myself to help others. I think that's powerful, and we sorely need it in our space. Today marks a one-year anniversary, actually, of the time that uh, President Obama and Joe Biden have in office. Realistically, what do you think they can get done in that time? Well, I think they could start to put the framework together to, to free the data, if you will, liberate the data so we can all be part of that solution. At the same time, they could work with regulatory agencies, the, uh, the FDA, some of the Medicare okay. services, to, to work them to get things done quicker. We, you know, we could develop one drug to treat cancer. In the future, we have to drug, develop lots of drugs together. Well, that's a whole new regulatory and legal framework. And he's going to start now working with me and many other cancer doctors across the country to make a difference. Uh, David, the vice president paid you a compliment about your ability to explain science. Here is that video. You're speaking plainly, straightforwardly, that every, everybody can understand exactly why it's important in the examples you've given. So, David, um, coming out of this, go ahead. 
Hey, you know, it's a privilege to be here. When you have the Vice President of the United States coming to a world forum and saying cancer is a disease that has suffered not just in the U.S., but around the world, and we are going to take a leadership role to ease suffering, and to be able to be on that panel was truly, you know, special to me, and I think special to everybody there. Yeah, not Thank you, Dave. the vice president coming and giving you a shout out, David. That's pretty nice. We already we we already know that that's true. Good to see you. Good to see you, Dr. David Agus in Davos, Switzerland. Thank you. Thank